when you have an incident like this it tends to draw attention on to kashmir which is what pakistan's aim is pakistan wants international opinion to be focused on kashmir so that be you know countries like the united states and so on exert pressure on india to talk to pakistan they want to talk to india they want to put india on the defensive so that india makes concessions on kashmir you respond to violence with violence uh, when there is an act of violence one from the pakistani side there has to be a calibrated and retaliatory act of violence inflicted on the to the pakistani side by the indian forces this is my personal opinion is to open a dialogue track or multiple dialogue tracks with various stakeholders in kashmir that will in my opinion tend to cool the temperature on the ground in kashmir that will cause less incentive for pakistan to maintain these militants and pump these militants in the response to violence has to be an increase in dialogue and an intensification in dialogues and out certain groups that are known to have the backing of the central government uh, you had for example recently a citizens group led by yashwant sinha who's in the margdarshak mandal of the bhartiya janata party people tend not to realize how many more casualties take place on the line of control when there was no ceasefire uh, today you know you have casualty counts in the region of 30 40 soldiers killed in in the course of a year uh, when there was a, 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 no ceasefire it was over 200 uh, a lot of people try to make out especially the indian government that the civilian protests in kashmir are entirely the handiwork of the pakistani uh, you know intelligence agencies uh, in my opinion that is not the case there is a definite groundswell of popular public support to these uh, demonstrations on the kashmiri side but equally the isi in pakistan and the pakistan army takes advantage of this the government's policy for whatever it is worth is that talks and terror cannot go together for pakistan on the other hand uh, its experience has been that india once the situation in kashmir cools down uh, india tends to not wa- want to talk at all uh, there is no incentive for the indian side to talk uh, this time of course it's not working the government has put its foot down it says it won't be pushed into dialogue by by civil protests but then you know the situation is getting worse and worse just because somebody starts by saying i want azadi you can't turn around and say no this man is not within the four corners of the constitution of india and therefore i won't talk to you you say okay you want azadi what kind of azadi what is your idea of azadi and then this way a skilled dialogue interlocutor will take the dialogue forward and before you know what's happened the dialogue will be moved away from the di- direction of azadi into more acceptable settlements on either side war is an option that involves the near destruction of the economy of both india and pakistan the use of nuclear weapons on uh, both sides which will the ramifications of which you know barely need to be uh, explained to people india has over the years managed to work itself into a position where it is seen as a responsible member of the international community a serious global uh, and you know certainly a regional power the minute you have an india pakistan war india and pakistan are then seen on the same level there are hard line statements that are made on that side as well especially when you know the indian television channels for example get on to a very hyperactive mode and a very nationalistic mode uh, but the fact is that there is uh, a serious hyper nationalistic dynamic on the indian side uh, and this has the potential of forcing the government's hand to take a harder line than it might have otherwise